Hello friends, welcome to the very relaxed embellishing of my shimmies. Perhaps you'll remember me saying in my last video, I do feel the need to embellish this a little bit because I know that they did that. They would embroider their chemises in the Regency era. Yeah, it's just that I couldn't really find any extant examples online of embroidered chemises. I may have been basing that entirely on this one dress that I saw online, which did in fact turn out to be a dress and not a chemise. There is this pair of stays. Isn't it awesome? Is it not glorious? When I'm going to make a pair of 1830 stays, and I do have plans, I'm going to make a pair of stays with an embroidered little bird on it. Oh yeah. But I'm going to make it blue in a cheeky nod to the Twitter icon, I think. Yeah. I mean, come on. Those stays are goals. Right there. Goals. Whoever did that is my hero. Heroine, probably. Anywho, I was faced with a bit of a conundrum. No extant examples, so I did this thing that I like to call a pulling a Bridgerton. In the sense that we are delving into the realms of historical fantasy. and leaving the realms of historical accuracy far, far behind us. So I present to you, without much further ado, the very relaxed trial and errors of embellishing my Regency shimmies. This is the Book of Design by Mrs. Watson, published in 1824. It's available for free online, and I've posted a link in the description box below. Now I settled on this design because frankly, I wanted something that was simple enough so that it wouldn't take me forever to embroider. It is hashtag relaxed Regency after all. And my knowledge of Regency era embroidering techniques can be neatly summed up in one word, non-existent. So this simple pattern seemed like a good idea. I liked that it looked like it was inspired by this Grecian border pattern because in the Regency era, the Grecian fashion of antiquity was having a bit of a moment. I drew it on freehand because I could just absolutely not be bothered to mess about with prints and transfer paper, and this worked just fine. I did draw some guidelines though, which helped a lot. This happened a couple of times too. I had left no room for the way back. I embroidered myself into a corner. I can't do anything right now. I'm working on this. You're wearing wool socks. I don't care. I am working on this. Ah! 
All right. Are you happy now? Right, that's the embroidery finished, but I was not done embellishing yet. I had my heart set on knitting a pretty lace edging for the sleeves to complement the embroidery. I dove into The Workwoman's Guide, an 1838 book on all things domestic and settled upon knitting pattern number four, open hem, because it looked fairly simple and I'm a big fan of simple. I'll start off straight away by saying that even though this cotton yarn is pretty tiny, it is still far too big. The instructions say to use sewing cotton, but I didn't have any of that lying around, so I used the tiniest knitting cotton my yarn stash had to offer. Whilst I was knitting this, I began to doubt. It didn't really look like anything I'd want to attach to the sleeves of my shift. Did I interpret the instructions wrong? Quite possibly. I asked around in historical knitting groups and the answer that made the most sense to me was that this was, as the name suggested, a sort of lace hemming tape that you could make yourself. I decided not to use it for the shift. However... Here's a fun fact for you. I do not like to waste things. So, after steam pressing it to within an inch of its life, I made a little choker out of it. Is it historically accurate? Was fun and quick to do. But anyway, enough distractions. Let's get cracking on those sleeves. Ah yes, the sleeves. I thought long and hard and settled on what might just be the easiest embellishment technique known to man. With the same sturdy linen thread I had used to fell the seams on the chemise, I basted it around the edge of the sleeves with long stitches. Then, using a tiny crochet hook and thin white cotton yarn, I chain stitched through the stitches. Now, I would love to explain this a little better, but I am an absolute disaster when it comes to crochet terms because I cannot wrap my head around all the differences between English and American crochet terminology. Seriously, why? Anywho, as I am a visual person, I thought I'd make a crappy little animation to illustrate what I mean. Hopefully this, in combination with the footage of me making the embellishment, will be sufficient in explaining how I did this. finished. Now is that not the easiest embellishment technique or what? I apologize once again for my dirty fingernails who look like I have been digging in the garden for hours when in fact I have not been near the garden in weeks. <sighs> and with that it's done. I've got to say I'm pretty happy with the effect. While I can't say that it is even remotely historically adequate as far as I know, it does give the shift a sort of personality, a sort of realness if you will, that I find my 18th century shift, having no embellishment at all, lacks. And of course after all that relaxing embellishing, it is time to relax some more. Thank you for watching. If you like this video and would like to support my channel, please consider subscribing or making a donation to my Ko-Fi account, link below, to keep me in materials. Thanks and till next time, bye!